Speaking in front of groups is a learnt skill, except that we don't bother to learn. Oh, so-and-so is a natural, they have the gift of the gab. We hear these types of things and imagine that an ability to speak in public is some inherent skill that we don't possess. We can all learn the skill, except that some start earlier than others. It doesn't matter. It is never too late to learn and the improvement challenge continues throughout our whole lives. Welcome back to this weekly edition every Tuesday of the Cutting Edge Japan Business Show. I'm your host, Dr. Greg Story, President of Dale Carnegie Training Japan and best-selling author of Japan Sales Mastery. We are bringing the show to you from our high performance center in Akasaka in Minato-ku, the business center of Tokyo. Why the cutting edge? In this show, we are looking at the critical areas for success in business in Japan. We want to help advance everyone's thinking so that we will be at the forefront, the cutting edge of how to flourish here in this market. Before we get into this week's topic, here is what caught my attention lately. University graduates are finding jobs so easily this year. After the Tohoku earthquake, tsunami, and triple nuclear reactor meltdowns, getting a job after graduation was a nightmare. Only 91% of graduates found jobs at that time. This year is up to 98% have found jobs, so things have changed considerably. What this underlines is the diminishing resource in Japan called the youth. Interestingly, the employment rate for humanities graduates overtook science graduates for the first time. There are less people to hire, so the competition for hiring staff is going through the roof. It is a zero-sum game too, because if you don't secure them, somebody else will. How can you grow your business if you can't attract staff? This is not going to go away as a problem and will only get worse. This is episode number 33, and we are talking about presentations. Can be scary. Sorry, dewa, ikimashou, let's get going. Hands and legs quivering, knees knocking together, throat parched, sweating profusely, face turning red, pulse racing, mind widening out. This is stage fright, because presentations can be scary. The term stage fright is associated with the total meltdown people experience when they get up on stage in front of an audience to speak. In Japan, there is even an association of stage fright victims who wish to suffer no more. Our exposure to the stage, broadly defined, is any occasion where we are required to get up and speak in front of others. This speaking frequency increases as we get older and as we advance in our careers. Our work responsibilities are rewarded with a salary increase, but also the obligation to give reports or speeches. We are innocently beavering away at our jobs, are recognized for doing well, and given promotions or more responsibility. This is when we are forced to move out of our area of defined expertise and out of our comfort zone. Standing in the crowd listening to your boss drone on is one thing. Becoming the boss and droning on yourself is another. At some point, this will happen if your career is to go anywhere. What will you be like compared to your boss? Equally boring and uninspiring? Frightened to death to get up and speak? A perennial stage fright victim? Tetsuya Miyaki is a typical example. He was a low-level bureaucrat in a municipal government office. Promoted to be the head of a department, he suddenly found himself having to give 
public presentations, including to the municipal assembly. He immediately found that his ambitions had now outstripped his abilities. When he became the mayor of a city ward, the speech requirement exploded and so did his stress. The opportunity to enjoy the fruits of his hard-earned prominence were removed because this one piece of the work gamut was killing him. I feel like I barely made it through my term, he lamented. So much for his climb up the greasy pole. When he got to the top, he hated it because he had not bothered to skill himself in one key area. That is ridiculous. This is what happens to us though. With no thought for the future, we plow along working hard, looking for the rewards, but forgetting the escalation of expectations that go together with that job progression we seek. If we took our nose off the grindstone for a minute and looked ahead, we would realize that if we go further up the echelon of organizations, our ability to speak in a professional manner will come with the territory. We don't think like that though, and suddenly we are confronted with our worst fear, speaking in front of others. I was the same. I had no vision of what the future would require. When I was younger, a friend of mine asked me to be the best man at his wedding. He was someone I respected very much, and it was an honor to be asked. I deferred and suggested an older mutual friend instead, citing my lack of experience with such a daunting responsibility. I wasn't telling him the real reason. The real cause was my terror of having to speak at the wedding instead of just sitting there, cool, calm, collected, eating, drinking, and enjoying myself like everyone else. I escaped that responsibility and enjoyed the wedding. Did I look ahead and realize this is what comes with future responsibilities and go and get some public speaking training? No. I just avoided the issue at every turn, running away from every request like a scared rabbit. Eventually, I did give a public speech. It was a meltdown. Find out more about my first speech disaster when we come back from the break. If you want to become a fully competent and confident presenter, then do the High Impact Presentations course. We are all being judged when we speak, be it in the internal team meeting or in a public environment, be it the big bosses, clients, or an industry audience. Everyone is evaluating us. Don't blow it. Get the best training on the planet. Do the high impact presentations course now in either Japanese or English. The best seller Japan Sales Mastery is the new Bible of selling in Japan. To sell to Japanese buyers, you need to create long-term partner-level trust, fully understand Japanese buyers' real needs, convince buyers with your solutions, overcome their hesitation, fear, and doubt, know how to ask for the order, ensure repeat orders. This book is the product of 30 plus years in the trenches selling in Japan. Order Japan Sales Mastery now. Welcome back. As I mentioned, eventually I gave my first public speech. It was in Tokyo in late uh, 1983 in Japanese and it was horrible. The Sundai Cram School had asked me to speak to their students. I cannot recall why that situation came about, but I was supposed to talk for 30 minutes. I finished in eight minutes. That is a lot of surplus time to fill in. I finished so quickly because my nerves were severely ramping up my speaking speed. I read the whole thing, never looked up at my victims, didn't smile, no pauses, no gestures, no voice modulation, no animation except high blood pressure, giving me a big red face like a warning beacon. 
It was bad. It felt bad. And I knew it. I was stubborn too. Did I go and get training after this near-death experience? No. I just kept on going, doing it the hard way. Why didn't I take the hint and realise I needed to be able to handle these types of public situations? I was planning to become a professor who would be delivering lectures, another form of common public speaking. I didn't connect the dots at all because I was focused on the fear of speaking, not the necessity of speaking well. I ultimately gave hundreds of speeches in the course of my work. I improved as I got more experience through a simple repetition of the act, uh, doing some reading, but I was still just an amateur, bumbling along. When I took the high impact presentations course with Dale Carnegie, it was such a revelation. Two instructors, everything videoed, massive personal coaching. It was amazing. I just kicked myself for all the opportunity cost I paid by not doing this course when I was younger. I have no doubt that if I'd done that course in my 30s, my entire career trajectory would have been much better. I was an idiot. I could have spent decades polishing my speaking skills at a high level, growing my potential rather than hiding from the opportunity. I could have ramped up my personal brand big time if I'd been half smart and gotten the training. Like Miyaki-san, for long periods of my career, I was in pure self-inflicted complete denial. Don't be stupid like me, get the training. If you're going to get anywhere in your career, you will need this facility to not just speak competently in front of an audience, but to speak persuasively. It is not a matter of if, only a matter of when. Are you going to let stage fright and fear get you? Are you going to kneecap your career growth? Are you going to be petrified every time you have to get up to speak? Do something about it. It is never too late to start. Some action items. One, recognize the key importance of having the professional facility to speak in front of groups. Two, don't wait. Get the training now. Three, use the training by seeking out as many speaking opportunities as possible. Four, always keep learning and perfecting your skills. And five, remember, it is never too late to start. The Cutting Edge Japan Business Show is here to help you succeed in Japan. Subscribe on YouTube, share it with your family, friends and colleagues. Become a regular. Thank you for watching this episode and remember to hit the subscribe button. Our website details are on screen now, dalecarnegie.com. It is awesome value, so check it out. In episode 34, we are talking about the holy grail of sales. Find out more about that next week. So, yoroshiku onagai itashimasu. Please join me for the next episode of the Cutting Edge Japan Business Show. We are here to help you, and we have only one direction in mind for you and your business, and that is up. <laughs>